D's quick on the trigger. Test, test, test. All right. Seven to one. Ready? Ready. Let's have fun. Hello, good evening, and welcome to Wednesday night service. Amen. <laughs> How many are glad to be in the house of God? Amen. I am glad to be in the house of God. Praise God. I am so glad to be here and see all the faces, and feels like a reunion. Praise God. God is good. Amen. God certainly is good. Let's open up in prayer, but uh, I want to welcome all of you and also welcome those that are joining us online. Thank you for tuning in. God's got something in store for each of us. Praise the Lord. So let's go ahead and open up in prayer. If we could all stand so we can pray and ask for the presence of God. Amen. God is omnipresent, but when we ask for his presence, it's the presence in here. Amen. So that our hearts are in that right place. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before the throne of grace, God. We love you, we thank you, we praise you. We are so grateful in our hearts, God, for your mercy. We're thankful for the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross. We thank you, God, that on that day, Lord, you took all of our sin on yourself, Lord, and that by accepting your love, all of our sin is washed away. Lord, we're so grateful, God, that this good news that you have given each and every one of us, God, that it is, it is the news that sets us free in an instant, and I praise your mighty name, God, that you have made it simple, that all who would just simply call on the name of the Lord will be saved, God. We thank you for this great salvation, Lord. But right now, Lord, we ask, God, for your presence. Yes. Lord, you're, you are omnipresent, but your presence in here as we open the door of our hearts, God, and allow you to come in and commune with us and us with you, God, that you could speak a word and a revelation into our lives, Lord. We give the Holy Spirit, oh Holy Spirit, we give you permission to move in our minds and in our hearts. Many of us, whether here, live or at home, have many burdens many worries, many concerns. But Lord, you have asked us to cast your care, our cares on you because you care for us, Lord. So Lord, right now, that's what we choose to do. We give you permission to 
speak into our minds and speak into our hearts that we would stop listening to the distractions of the enemy, the distractions of the world, and that we would open up to you, Lord. So we give you permission, and right away in this service, as we worship the Lord in praise. Lord, we give you thanks for all things. In Jesus' name, and all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Now let's worship God. Amen. 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 Go ahead and sing this chorus out with us. And here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Amen. Let's sing, Light of the World. In light of the world, you step down into darkness and open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you and hope of a life spent with you. Come on, we sing. And here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above, humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became poor, we sing it out. And here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. I'll sing it again. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. We sing, oh, here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Oh, here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, 
all together wonderful to me. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Simply come, longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself. Is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart, oh, we sing it out. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. express how much you deserve though I'm weak and poor oh, all I have is yours yeah every single breath oh I'll bring you I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required, oh. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart and I'm singing. I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you. Yes, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, oh, yes, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. Yes, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. 
Yes, it's all about you. Oh, it's all about you. Yeah. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. Yes, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, oh, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Let it all about you. Yes, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. Praise God. It's all about you, Jesus. No, there will come a day where we're in eternity. Nothing else is going to matter but the Lord. Because at the beginning, that was the only thing that mattered. But Adam took his eyes off of the Lord. And when he did that, this whole journey started. But this journey is going to come to an end. And all of us who are now redeemed will be with God in eternity. And the only thing that's going to matter is God. The only thing. I praise the Let's give him praise for that. Yeah. Let's amen, give God amen. praise for that. We praise him. We praise him. Oh, hallelujah, God. We, we long for the day, Lord. We know, God. We know, God, that that day is coming. Just think of it. One day that trumpet blast is going to sound, and I know we talk about that often. But we could be the generation that experiences that. That is both joyous and sobering. Joyous to those who live for the Lord and sobering for those who want to live for the Lord. Because I think we got a bit of both in here. Amen? Can I, get a, can I get an amen? Do we have a bit of both? Amen. I mean, you can never be too close to the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Right now, we're going to take a moment and... Uh, we're going to go through our prayer directives. Let me get my little podium out here. Thank you, sir. I can do it. Praise God. Let's, let's have a time of prayer. Amen. Amen. You know, there's a scripture here. It's uh, Mark 10, 46 through 52. It says to take heart, get up. Jesus is calling. And Jesus stopped and, and said, call him. And they called the blind man saying to him, take heart, get up, he is calling you. All of us had that moment. All of us were blind spiritually, and Jesus called us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our prayer direct is for our church is to take heart. To take heart means to have courage. Amen. To be encouraged. And to be encouraged is to be inject with courage. And when you encourage somebody, you inject them with courage. It also says to get up. With a determination, the church will move forward. Amen. And also, Jesus is calling. Amen. Jesus is calling. He's calling us to be fishers of men. This is our time, church. This is our time. So these are our prayer directives, and I think these are posted online, if I'm not mistaken, on our website. But uh, right now, we're going to take a moment and pray for some specific prayer needs. 
Uh, the one need that we all need to be lifting up are those, those who are uh, in the crosshairs of that hurricane. They're saying that hurricane's going to be really bad, and it's already a Category 4. Uh, we need to pray. We need to pray for those people. And also to our nation, it just seems like every week there's something new that's disruptive. I really think that the enemy is getting desperate. These are the end times. I feel it in my spirit. We need to pray. We need to pray for our nation. We need to pray for our government, our president, vice president. We need to pray. Amen. There's a few specific needs here. Uh, Ellie needs healing of vertigo. Uh, Derek and Jamie, healing, peace, strength, and comfort. Uh, Danny's mom, Don, healing um, an inflammation. So we need to pray for her. Mackenzie, year and a half, uh, uh, one and a half year old, diagnosed with stage four neuroblastoma. Wow, we need to pray. Amen. Affecting organs and ad abdomen. Uh, Josie, we need to pray for a family situation there. Carol A., uh, friend of, uh, uh, rather, uh, a friend, Cheryl. And, uh, Cheryl's son, Mike, uh, they both need healing in their lungs. Uh, James G., the family. Uh, Daniel and Victoria for their children. Uh, praying also for uh, mom to come home and also for financial uh, help. The Lord's provision, amen. Uh, Julia uh, needs healing. Uh, neck is frozen, very painful. Uh, zero mobility. We need to lift her up. Praise the Lord. Uh, Haley, nine years old, kidney surgery. So we need to pray for her. Uh, also, India, Haley's mom, 33 weeks pregnant, and right now she's at a high risk. And we also need to pray for Don for recovery from uh, a fall uh, two months ago. So there's many, many needs, and I'm certain that in the midst of these needs, there's also needs in this room. Uh, how many are willing to lift up their hand and acknowledge that they have a need in their life? Who has a need in this place? Amen. Both of Pastor Ron's hands are up. Don't be shy to lift up your hand. Amen. We're, we're not, we don't have time to necessarily call in everybody, but we want you to acknowledge that you have a need in the company of the church body and in the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that God knows your need before you even ask. So the Bible also says that uh, you have not because you ask not. So that's why we're going to ask. We're going to pray over all of your needs. Amen. And we're going to believe God for a miracle in your life. So let's take a moment and pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before the throne of grace, God. Lord, we glorify your mighty name, God. There truly is none like you. And Lord, the wonderful thing about you is that you are simply a prayer away. All we have to do is cry out, God. What a glorious, glorious plan you have given us. Thank you, Lord, for making it easy. And thank you, Lord, for the grace of always being available to us. Thank you, Lord, that the veil was torn in two. Praise be to your name. We honor you. Lord, right now we want to lift up every single need that has been verbalized in this place, God. Everything on this list, God. Every person every sickness, everything, God. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus for you to meet these needs. And with hands lifted high, acknowledging your need, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, we ask, God, that every, every sickness, every need of sickness, every financial need, every marital need, every measure of healing, God, relationships between parents and children, Lord God, Every single need, all the pain, all the hurt, all the stress, all the anxiety, all the worry. Lord, we pray over that right now, God, that the God of miracles would rain down a blessing that we could not contain in each and every one of our lives. Lord, we know, God, in acknowledging our prayer with our lifted hand that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or imagine, God. So I ask, God, not in a cavalier way, God, Lord, but, but taking a stand of faith, God, that you will meet every single need in this place. 
And as I'm praying, you can verbalize that uh, to yourself, your need. Amen. Verbalize it right now. Lord, I pray that you meet these needs, God. Lord, I ask that the Holy Spirit, Lord God, would bring peace, a wholeness and completeness, a peace in the lives of every individual, Lord God, that has their hands lifted up. Lord, that you would acknowledge, Lord God, that you're going to meet their need as you always do, Lord, because you are a God that never lets us down. Hallelujah. Lord, we also want to pray, Lord God, for those, Lord God, that are going to be caught in the, in the hurricane, Lord. Everyone's been asked to evacuate, but there are those that aren't evacuating, Lord. <sighs> Lord, I pray for a supernatural covering over their lives. Lord, we know that you give life and you take it away, God, but we still bless your name. But Lord, I ask for something supernatural to happen, Lord God, for all these, Lord God, for there are many that didn't leave because they couldn't leave, God. I ask that you help them, God, and that you be with them, God. Oh, Jesus. And Lord, we also pray, Lord God, for your perfect will to be done in our country, Lord God. We know and understand, Lord God, that at times, before there is a resurrection, there has to be a crucifixion, Lord. We know, Lord God, that sometimes things need to get worse before they get better. But Lord, we ask, God, for a supernatural touch on our nation, Lord God, on all of this civil unrest and social imbalance, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you intervene supernaturally because we know that you can. We also pray for our leadership, God, in our government, our president, Lord, for all of the staff of the presidency, Lord God, all members of government, Lord God, and for those, Lord God, who have an agenda that is contrary to what is right, Lord, we ask, God, that you speak into their hearts and minds, Lord, that there would be an alignment, God, hallelujah. We pray for our nation, God. We pray that we would be set free from all of this imbalance, Lord. And Lord, more importantly, at this moment, we ask for your blessing on this service. Lord, we ask that you bless and touch every single life in this room. Lord, that tonight would be a game changer for everyone in this place. Lord, I, we open up our hearts, we open up our minds, God, and we give you permission to move inside of us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we glorify your mighty name. We're always so careful to give you thanks. And if you believe God's going to do something powerful in your life, give a shout. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. God is good. Thank you so much, Kyle. Let's give Kyle and our, our brother, let's give them a round of applause. Amen. Stand up, brother. Take a bow. <laughs> Praise God. God is so good. I set my timer for one hour and one minute at 6.59 because I definitely want to get you guys out of here by 8 o'clock. How many want to get out of here by 8 o'clock? Okay, okay, one hand, all right. Who wants to stay till after eight? Oh my goodness, what's going on in this place? I am so glad Pastor Ron left. No, I'm not, I wish he would have seen that. All right, well, praise God. I, I'm gonna try to not take too much of your time, but you know, Brother, Brother Ron Gutierrez and Pastor Ron, they gave me a, a, a pretty good glut of scriptures, and these are really good scriptures. I mean, I could just take one or two of these and just preach the whole night. But uh, I'm going to have to uh, really go through all of this. And God's given me not just a word, but multiple words to share with you today that I believe is going to help you in your walk. Amen. As I was putting this together, it's like God made it clear to me that this message should be titled Real Change. Amen. Who wants real change in their lives? Real change. Amen. Amen. Not, not just a, a religious change that's a passing, that, that, that kind of passes, but something that sticks, something that lasts. You know, when I look at this passage, I can't help but to feel and, and believe in my spirit that this passage single-handedly can change anyone's life. There is so much rich scriptures in here. So without further ado, let me go ahead and read the passage, and then I'll get into the teaching because as of right now, I have 32 uh, minutes and uh, like 
20 seconds, so <laughs> I'm going to try to get through this. Amen. So if you have notes, does everybody in this place have their notes? Anybody not have notes? Okay, everybody has them? Great. Perfect. Uh, and if you don't have your notes and you want to read from your Bible, feel free to do so. It's 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 through 28. And this is closing uh, the study on the book of 1 Thessalonians, and we're going to be starting uh, the next book, 2 Thessalonians, uh, next week. Is that next week? Okay, praise God. I'm getting the, the nod yes. Amen. All right, so let's read our scripture. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who carry, who rather care for you in the Lord and admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disheartened. Uh, help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is, the, this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the Spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good, reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. Greet all of God's people with a holy kiss, I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers and sisters. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. We now ask, God, that you anoint this teaching, Lord, that it would pierce and penetrate our hearts, Lord, and that we would walk out of here with something tangible in our lives, God. We give you permission, Lord, as we open our mind and our heart to speak, Lord God, into us a revelation of Jesus Christ. We give you thanks in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. All right, my first point in this message, and these are your fill-in-the-blanks. Um, always encourage each other. Amen? Always encourage each other. And as I mentioned a little bit ago, encourage means to inject courage into somebody. That's what it means. You know, um, like if uh, you're talking to a fellow brother or sister in the Lord and they're discouraged about something, to encourage them, you use the word of God, the promise of God, to encourage them, to, to lift them up out of their discouragement. Amen. So it is up to us to inject courage. How many know that Pastor Ron needs, needs to be encouraged? He needs courage, amen, because just like you and I frail and go through our issues, Pastor Ron goes through the same things. You know, you know yes, you know, he's our pastor, he's a leader, God's anointed him, and has probably gave him more spiritual Teflon, if you will, uh, against the, the world and even some of our mess, amen, that we bring to him, but we need to encourage Pastor Ron. You know... I don't know that ever a time goes by where I don't uh, acknowledge him as my pastor. He is my pastor. Amen. I am so grateful that God placed me under the headship of Pastor Ron. He is the most gracious man I've ever met. In fact, every bit of grace that I now have in my life, I've learned from him. And it's not that he pulled me aside and said, all right, Danny, let me teach you about grace. No, no, no. It's just his example and how he treats me. And every time I have an idea about something for ministry or whatever, yes, let's do that. Go ahead and go with that. You know, he's always so encouraging, always so empowering. And it's, it's rubbed off on me. And now I'm like that to my wife. I'm like that to my daughters. I'm, you know, it's changed who I am as a person because I want to be, you know, a lot, the world says I want to be like Mike. I want to be like Pastor Ron. 
Amen. I want to be a gracious person. Who wants to be a gracious person in this place? Amen. 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 Praise God. So we need to encourage our leaders. It says, now we ask, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Now, the word admonish, just so you know, it means to correct. It means to rebuke. Amen? This is what that word means. It means to give direction. Uh, a lot of times we hear the word, and it's like a religious word, like admonish. How, how, how many have ever heard that word prior to coming to know the Lord? You know, prior to coming to know the Lord. You're cheating, Doug. I know you didn't hear that before you knew Jesus. Because people don't talk that way in the world. But admonish means to correct. Amen. In fact, every time a preacher gets up here, that's what we bring is admonishment to the body of Christ so that the body of Christ can be better. If you come in here and you don't leave with something, then something's wrong. Amen? You always have to leave here better than you came in. Praise the Lord. I got one amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, at least I got an amen. Amen. Praise God. 13 goes on to say, hold them in high regard in love. Now, Holding them in high regard doesn't mean that, oh, Pastor Ron's coming, get the rose petals. You know, it doesn't mean, it's just in love, in love, amen. That's my pastor. Pastor Ron is my pastor. And I'm, I'm always joyful to see him, and he knows that, amen. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with one another, amen. I want to encourage this church to be a joy to your pastors. Be a joy to them. Amen. Here's what Hebrews 13, 17 says. Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give account. Think of it. Pastor Ron's going to have to give an account for this church to the Lord. Amen. So he can't be preaching no false doctrine up here. Amen. He has to bring the truth. Praise the Lord, or else he's going to be held accountable. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden. How many Christians in churches bring burdens to their pastors? A lot, a lot. And a lot of it's a lack of repentance. Think of it. You know, brother so-and-so comes, he gets saved, he's up here in tears, we're all in tears because brother so-and-so got saved, and, and now he starts serving in the church, and he's doing, you know, and, and then all of a sudden, he just drops off. And it's like, what happened? And it, it, it's, it's a burden. And then a few weeks later, brother so and is knocking on Pastor Ron, ready to unload all of his problems. It's like, man, we just got to just live for God, Amen. He's got to live for God and quit living for the world. So our scripture here says to be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no benefit to you. So if Pastor Ron was weighed down, ready to, ready to turn in his keys, and he was just done, that would be of no benefit to any of us, amen? We have to be an encouragement. It goes on to say in verse 14, concerning encouragement, uh, or to encourage, it says, and we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Amen. Warn them. The thing is, is sometimes we're a little, uh, a little aggressive sometimes when we warn people. You know, we want to get the point across. You know, the Bible says in Colossians uh, 3.16, it says, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly. And listen closely to this. And teach, and as you teach and admonish one another. Now listen close, listen close. With all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. If we are going to warn those who are disruptive and idle, we need to admonish them or warn them, correct them through psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, giving thanks to God. That's how we're supposed to do it. So what does that mean? That means that we're to, supposed to do it in love, always in love. It's godly love. And you cannot do that effectively with worldly love. 
it's the love that you have within your own self won't work. You need the Lord's love. Amen. And in order to be able to execute the Lord's love properly, you need the Holy Spirit inside of you. And if you are not equipped with this, then you have no business correcting anybody because you're not prepared for it. You need to go in your prayer closet, get your heart right, get full of the Holy Ghost, and admonish with love. Amen? That's a huge takeaway right there. Which leads me to my second point. And this is your next fill in the blank. God is forgiveness. <laughs> you know, uh, forgiveness is an attribute. Amen? It's a godly attribute. How many would say in this place that God has the attribute of forgiveness? Okay, hands going up everywhere. How many would say that God has the attribute of grace? How many would say that God has the attribute of mercy? And how many would say that God has the attribute of love? Amen, okay. There's a reason why his name is I am. And I'm here to tell you that God is love. It's not his attribute. He just is love. God is grace. It's not his attribute. He just is grace. He's justice. He's mercy. Amen. He is forgiveness. God is these things. Amen. We need to understand who our God is. Why do you think he told Moses, I am that I am. I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. I am. He is love. Amen. So touching on this point of forgiveness, it's just one scripture in our text. It's 1 Thessalonians 5.15, and here's what it says. Is make sure, and it doesn't even talk about forgiveness, but it's evident in the scripture. It says, make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. You cannot pull this off without having the attribute of forgiveness in you. And you can't effectively pull it off if you don't have the Holy Spirit alive inside of you. Amen? Isn't that really remarkable how that works? There's a reason why Jesus said, and I will send a helper. I will send a helper, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we must always forgive. You know, can a Christian really call themselves a Christian if they don't have a heart of forgiveness? How many people in this place, without a show of hands, because I don't want to embarrass anybody, possibly are harboring unforgiveness towards someone. And I'm here to tell you that there is a percentage of people in this auditorium that haven't forgiven somebody or multiple people. Here's what Matthew, and this is a very sobering scripture. Matthew 6.15 says this, but if you do not forgive, and these are Jesus' words, but if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive you of your sins. It's a scary thing to know that you're going to go into heaven and not be forgiven. Wow. That is a sobering thought. I want to encourage everyone in this room to really scour your hearts and take an inventory of your hearts and if there's anybody that you have not forgiven i encourage you to call that person and just share god's love amen just share god's love just just let them know that the holy spirit put it on your heart and uh whatever's happened in the past i just want to let you know so and so that it's in the past and i love you and uh, you don't even have to tell them I forgive you because, you know, that might be offensive to them because they're probably stuck in their flesh and in the world. But just tell them. I just wanted to call, say hello, and just, just say that I love you and I miss you. I miss uh, being around you and our friendship. Amen? 
Just establish that. Be the godly person. Take the, as the world, as, as people say, take the high road. Amen. And God's going to reward you for it. How many believe that God's a, a God of reward? Amen. He's a God of reward. You know, I know that we're going to get our rewards in heaven, but it's nice to get a little bit down here, huh? Amen? <laughs> All right. My third point is this. And this is your next fill in the blank. The safest place, the word the safest, is your fill in the blank. And this is out of 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 22. Let me ask a question. In this place, and this might be a rhetorical question, who wants to be spiritually sound in this place? Amen. Who wants to be spiritually strong in this place? Is there somebody that doesn't? I, I like to see your hand if you don't. Amen. Everybody does. Amen. That's why we're here. We want to be strengthened. We, wanna, we want more of God in our lives. We want to be spiritually strong. The good news is, is this scripture we're about to read is the process of how to become spiritually strong and how to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, Pastor Ron always says, what's true in the natural is also true in the spiritual. And what's true in the natural is if you put in hard work into something, you're going to reap a benefit. Yes? Amen? Okay. So the same thing is in the spiritual. So if you put in the work or do what you're supposed to do in the kingdom, you're going to reap a reward. And that wonderful reward is a fuller presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now let's read these scriptures. Verse 16. Rejoice always. What rejoice is, is praise. It's when you lift up your voice in a loud cry with praise. Amen. You are rejoicing to the Lord for the goodness of God in your life. You might not have a job. Your bank account might be at a negative but your kids are healthy. Your salvation is enrooted in the gospel. You are building your faith on that sure foundation as described in the book of Matthew chapter 7. Those who, those who hear my words and put them to, into practice is like the wise man that built his house on the rock. When the rains came, the winds blew, and the waters rose, that house was not shaken because it had its it, it was built on the rock. It was built on the foundation of the word of God. Amen. So when you rejoice, you're building your house on that foundation. You're praising the living God. You know, there's a deep teaching, and I'm actually putting this together, but if you examine the book of Ezekiel chapter 28, you find out that Satan was the worship leader in heaven. You find that out. It's clear. Satan wanted to become a merchant in heaven. He wanted to pocket some of it for himself. He wanted worship for himself. And we all know that he eventually wanted to be like the Most High. He wanted the praise. And of course, he fell. Jesus said, I saw him fall like a bolt of lightning. Amen. What did Satan say to Jesus? What did he say to him when he was being tempted? He said to him, worship me and I will give you all of this. And what did Jesus say? It is written, worship the Lord thy God and him only. Amen. It brought it back all the way to even before this earth was created. That moment when Jesus was being tempted. When we give God praise, we give God praise where it is due. And when we rejoice, it puts us in a place of blessing. Amen. If you want to be blessed in your life, always give God praise. Amen. Always give God praise. Because not only does it fix your attitude, but it also blesses God. And when God gets blessed, he blesses us in return. Rejoice always. The next one, verse 17, says pray continually. Now, the best way I can describe verse 17 is this. 
I once heard a testimony, and I think I've shared it here once or twice, about uh, uh, an evangelist, an American evangelist in the 1800s named uh, D.L. Moody. How many have heard the name D.L. Moody? Yeah, a lot of people. D.L. Moody was being interviewed once. And because he's a man of God and, you know, full of the Holy Ghost and, you know, they asked him, when you wake up every morning, how long do you pray? And his answer shocked them. It shocked them. Here's what he said. I pray for about five minutes. I pray for about five minutes. But then he followed it up with this comment. He said, but I often go five minutes without praying throughout my day. Meaning he's always talking to God. Always talking to God. Always connected to the Holy Spirit. Amen? Pray continually. And that's what that means. Always be connected to God. Yes, it's nice when you get on your knees and start praising God and start getting your heart right and start you know, praying for God's kingdom and asking for the Lord's blessing on people, their needs, your needs, God's protection and guidance in your life, and then you close it out with some more praise and thanksgiving, and you have a good Holy Ghost time in your time of prayer. That's wonderful. But after you say your amen, that doesn't mean that you check out. God is omnipresent, and he's with you always. So if he's in the car with you, don't you think that you need to talk to him? If he's in the, in the cubicle right next to you or in your cubicle, don't you think you maybe should say a few words here and there? Amen. Just understand that God is always watching. He is always over you as a protector to guide you, to direct you. So pray continually. Man, I'm going to go on till midnight tonight. This is, man, I'm pre... Okay, then get on to the next one. Okay, verse 18. Verse 18, and man, I can preach this one for weeks. This one is, verse 18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances. Amen. For this is God's will for you in Christ. Now, here's the thing. In the men's ministry, because of everything that's going on and you know, how sometimes our minds get in the wrong place, we forget uh, about kingdom principles. Amen. So in prayer, one of the things that the Holy Spirit revealed to me is that, that gratitude or gratefulness or thanksgiving, it puts, us, it puts us in the right state of mind in all things that are the kingdom of God. Think of this for a moment. How effective would your prayer life be if you didn't have a thankful heart. Okay? All right. How effective would your time in God's word be if you did not have a thankful heart? Amen? How obedient would you be if you did not have a thankful heart? Think about that for a minute. How, uh, you know, and, and because a thankful heart forgets about all the blessings of God, and when you forget all the blessings of God, you forget, why is it even worth obeying God? So here, let me go do this sin and let me go do that sin, right? Amen? Anyone? Anyone in this place? Any other human in here? I, I'm going to tell you right now, if you have a thankful heart, it is the runway, the platform that sets everything else in the kingdom of God to flight. In fact, in the back of your notes, flip over your notes real quick. We just did a six-week study in the men's ministry on having an attitude of gratitude. Out of that chapter in, on the page there, on the flip side, see how it says uh, a heart of gratefulness or heart of thanksgiving? Uh, out of that chapter, we pulled six Bible studies, and one of the cycle things that you see in that scripture is you see the, the, <clears throat> the, the people of God disobeying God, amen? You, you see this happen over and over and over and over and over. They disobey God, they suffer the consequences of disobedience. Amen? Then they cry out to God. That's step three. Step four, God saves them from their distress. And then step five, they give God thanks for he is good. His love endures forever. Amen? And you see it over and over and over. Read that scripture. Meditate on it. God's going to teach you something because having a heart of gratitude is a game changer in your walk with God. It'll change everything. 
And, and understand that it, having an, adi- an attitude is a position that you decide to take. If I wanted to have a negative attitude towards this church, I wouldn't even be here tonight, amen? Because all it is, it's a decision that I make. Politics is a decision that I make. My stance and where I'm gonna, what I'm gonna follow in politics is a decision that I make. My choice to ignore politics is a decision that I make. My choice to serve God is a decision that I make. Everything is all about decisions. So if I decide to have a heart of gratefulness, it's gonna change my walk with God. Amen. Give thanks to God in all circumstances. It doesn't matter what you're going through. If your bank account is negative 62 cents, get on your knees and give God thanks. Amen. Give God praise. Because God is showing you something. And he's making you better today than you were yesterday. And understand this. He's going to come to your rescue. Amen. All you got to do is cry out. God is, all he is is a cry away. He's a prayer away from saving you, from anything that you're going through. We're going to have a conversation about this 10,000 years from now in heaven, and you're going to say, you know what, Brother Danny? You know what? You're right, man. You're right. Yes, I know. (laughs) It's the word from the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we need to give God thanks in all circumstances. Amen. Um, Also, too, uh, this helps us in maintaining our relationship with God, because When you do these three things, rejoicing, praying continuously, and giving God thanks, it puts us in a place spiritually so that you begin to have more of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen. Because it corrects a lot of the malignness of our stinking thinking and the dumb decisions that we make and our neglect of reading the word of God and praying and all these things, this right here single-handedly changes our attitude so that we could focus more on God. And when we focus more on God at this level, all of a sudden, we're radiating with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our cup runneth over. How many wants their cup to run over? The wonderful thing about the Holy Spirit is when the Holy Spirit fills you and you're already full to capacity and it just keeps coming, then it runs over into your spouse, into your kids, into your co your, your cursing co-workers, amen. It runs into everybody else. And it's because of the decision you made to serve God. So now that you have the Holy Spirit, here's the very next verse. <laughs> the very next verse says, and do not quench the Holy Spirit. Wow. Here we are living for God, and then we have the audacity to quench the Holy Spirit. Let me read a few verses here, and they're in your notes. Different versions of what the scriptures say on this, on this. And I think it, it'll help us understand a little bit about what this quench means. New International Version says, do not quench the Spirit. New Living Translation says, do not stifle the Holy Spirit. And what stifle means is to suffocate. Wow. You know, I, I hate using this as an analogy, but I'm gonna use it. How many have seen the video of George Floyd dying? A lot of, lot of us have. Or maybe we've seen clips on the news. Imagine, if you will, because of your decision-making and your behavior, that that's what you do to the Holy Spirit. And I know it sounds rough. I know maybe that's a rough example. But the only reason why I say that is because at times we really don't appreciate the Holy Spirit the way we're supposed to. And we really aren't careful in the things that we say and the things that we do where it actually quenches the Holy Spirit or it stifles the Holy Spirit. It got quiet in this place. And I think for all of us, we could do a better job at this, amen? There's a lot of takeaways here. Another uh, 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 translation says, do not extinguish the Holy Spirit. So if the Holy Spirit is a burning flame inside of you, don't extinguish the Holy Spirit. Contemporary English version says, don't turn away God's Spirit. 
That's like, like you know, uh, if, if a, girl, girl, uh, a, a Girl Scout cookie is coming to sell you your favorite Girl Scout cookies and you turn them away. <laughs> you know, I have to turn them away because I'm a diabetic, but sometimes I don't. You know, I buy the Thin Mints and, you know. But, it, you know, it's like you, you turn the Holy Spirit away. Why would you do such a thing? But yet we do it all the time. I got two more minutes. I still got a lot of scripture. I better keep going here. All right, do not restrain the Holy Spirit. Do not put out the Holy Spirit. Putting out the Holy Spirit is opening the door and saying, get out. Closing the door. Do not put out the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to properly function in God's kingdom. Jesus called the Holy Spirit the helper out of John 14, 16, and 17. With the help of the Holy Spirit, we can discern what is good and what is not good, which leads me to my next scriptures. And I'm almost done. I'm going to go a little over, Brother Ron. <laughs> Verse 20 says, And do not treat prophecies with contempt. Oh, that's sister so-and-so again prophesying in church. I can't even hear her from where I'm at. So, okay, you know, it's like, you know, we have to be careful because understand that these, these things come from the Holy Spirit. We have to be careful. And uh, we just had a Bible study in the men's ministry that says uh, the wise heed, amen, they heed the word of God and they ponder. They heed and ponder. And I can teach that the rest of the night, but I'm, I'm just going to stop right there. We have to be careful and make sure that whenever we receive a prophecy that we discern whether it is from God, amen. We don't treat it with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good and reject every kind of evil. So, so if something good comes out of that prophecy, hold on to it. Apply it to your life because the Holy Spirit just spoke something into your ear gates, amen. Faith comes by and hearing by the, amen, amen. And we can receive a word through the prophecy of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord, amen. So there's good stuff, but then there's stuff that might not be good. And that's where the Holy Spirit helps us to discern what is good and what is not good. Because here it says in verse 22, reject every kind of evil, amen. So now that we've learned, my alarm went off. Amen. <laughs> so now that we've learned to, to rejoice always, pray continuously, and give thanks, and to, to have, a, have a lot of care, sensitive care to the Holy Spirit that's alive inside of us, now that we've learned these things, we have to be an encourager. Think of it. Our first point, you have to inject courage into one another. Amen. Even if somebody is idle and disruptive, you admonish them with love. The next one is forgive. Amen. Not repaying wrong for wrong. And then the third is maintaining our relationship with God. Amen. So the thing is, is now that you've established these things in your life, that's where real change happens. Amen. That's where real change happens. If you neglect to apply these things in your life, don't expect any change. You'll be here a year from now, muddling through your Christian walk, 365 days from today. But if you want to see change in your life, this text, if you meditate on it, I mean, the, the Word of God as a whole, <laughs> the Word of God is so deep, so deep. But I want to encourage you that if you apply these things to your life, forgive, encourage, amen, maintain your relationship with the Holy Spirit, it's going to change everything about your Christian faith. Amen. You'll be full of the Holy Spirit and you'll be a blessing to so many people, which leads me to my last point. And the last point is this, number four, truly sanctified. Truly sanctified. Amen. Let me ask a question. Whose job is it to sanctify you? You know, and yeah, you're right, it's God's. But do you think that we play a role in our sanctification? Absolutely. In fact, I'll read a scripture to you here in 2 Thessalonians 2.13 that, that reveals that it's both God's job and our job. Listen, to, listen closely. But we ought always to thank God for you. 
Amen, that's, that's our part. Brothers and sisters, loved by the Lord because God chose you for, uh, as first fruits to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit, and here's our part, and through belief in truth. Amen. So not only are we supposed to be people of thanksgiving at the beginning of the scripture, we're also to be people of, uh, who believe in truth. So it is both the Holy Spirit's job and our job to be sanctified. Amen. Sanctification. You know, Paul presents in this scripture, in, in the final uh, verses here of this scripture, prayer, blessings, and direction. So I'm going to go ahead and read through those and close and pray. 1 Thessalonians 5.23, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. Amen. The word sanctify means to be set apart. There are people in this world who are living in sin. There are people in this world who are living for themselves. They are not set apart. They're living like everybody else. People who set themselves apart are people who stop living for the world, stop living for themselves, and start living for God. So it is to, set, to be set apart. The decision is ours and, and is also solidified by God himself. Amen. Let, let the God of peace sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit... Not just part of your spirit, but your whole spirit, your whole soul, and your whole body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 24, the one who calls you is faithful and true. He will do it. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says that God's promises are yes and amen, and God will do it. I'll tell you what a glorious time it's going to be on that day when we're being raptured. Amen. What a glorious time. I mean, we're going to be, phew, we're going to be looking at each other. Hey, what's up, Brother Ron? Hey, Brother Danny, I didn't think you'd make it, but you did. Yeah, I did. Praise God. Thank God for his grace. Amen. Praise God. But God's promises are yes and amen. And that means something. And it should mean something to each and every one of us. Amen. Paul closes with these words. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. Greet all of God's people with a holy kiss. I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers and sisters. And yes, in the year 2020, during this Bible study at Harvest Church in Glendale, Arizona, amen, this letter has been read. And I have actually am concluding this letter right now. Amen. It's being read because the scripture has charged us to, for it to be read to all the brothers and sisters. And verse 28, one of my favorite scriptures, and it's quoted often throughout the Bible, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to end right there. I have a little more teaching in my notes, but I'm just going to end because it's a little bit past 8 o'clock. I try to discipline myself because Pastor Ron says, 8 o'clock, we're going to turn the lights off. Your mic gets... We're going to shut your mic off. <laughs> I'm glad he's not here. Praise God. Jesse's got his finger on the button, though, so I better hurry up. All right, let's all stand. Amen. I want to encourage you, church. Take, take these words, the, the, this passage, and there's so many passages that you can do this with, but really break it down and, and take it to heart because it can help you so tremendously in your walk with God. Amen. I know that all of us want to be closer to God. But that's my encouragement to you. Don't, don't take this and, you know, the notes get lost behind the couch and, oh, you know, a year and a half later when you vacuum underneath, oh, look, you know, here's, you know. Apply it to your life. Amen. Rejoice always, pray continuously, and give God thanks in all circumstances. And do not quench the Holy Spirit ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for the promise, the potency, the power of your word. God, we thank you for the truth that we choose to stand on, God. We thank you, Lord God, for the visitation of the Holy Spirit for the anointing of your teaching, Lord God, and more importantly, what you've done in the hearts and minds of each and every person, both watching online and everybody here live, Lord.
Lord, we ask that you seal this word in our hearts, God, that we would live according to the directives, God, that we would grow closer to you, God, and be a people of encouragement and be a people uh, who have a heart of forgiveness and those who protect the Holy Spirit alive inside of us who can truly stand in our Christian faith knowing that we have been set apart for the coming day of Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, I ask for your strength, your favor, your blessing to be on every person. And I don't say that in a cavalier way, Lord. I literally mean each individual person, God. Let the countenance of the Lord rest on each person, God. Go with each person as they return to their homes filled with the Holy Spirit, Lord God. Let the Holy Spirit fill their homes, waiting for them that they could start entering into a time of true peace in their lives. But not the peace that we know as we know it, Lord, but true wholeness and completeness, God, in our lives, in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Lord, we thank you for all that you are doing, all that you have done, and all that you are going to do, God. Bless each and every one. We give you thanks. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's children said, amen. Amen. Go with God. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. Thank you.